Hello, I'm Richard Hara, and this is Social Impact Live, a weekly conversation with members of the Columbia School of Social Work community. I'm happy to introduce today and host uh, Dr. Mimi Abramovitz. Dr. Abramovitz is the Bertha Capen Reynolds Professor of Social Work at the Silverman School of Social Work, Hunter College, and the Graduate Center of the City University of New York. Her research interests include women, poverty, social welfare policy, human services, and activism. Widely published and regularly interviewed by the print and broadcast media, she is the author of Regulating the Lives of Women, Social Welfare Policy from Colonial Times to the Present, now in its third edition. She has been honored with 15 awards, most recently the Council of Social Work Education's Significant Lifetime Achievement Award. Uh, Dr. Abramovitz received her master's and doctoral degrees from the Columbia University School of Social Work. So we're happy to welcome her back here today to talk about Voting as Social Work, a national campaign to ensure that social workers play their part in getting out the vote. Dr. Abramovitz, welcome to Social Impact Live. Uh, thank you, and thank you for inviting me. I'm an alumni of Columbia University School of Social Work, as you noted, and it's really nice to be back here and talking to you about this important campaign. Well, it's wonderful to have you here. Um, before we get into the details of this campaign, I wonder if you could just share with our viewers how you came to be involved with this particular issue? Sure. Well, you, as you mentioned, I've been an activist for many years, but I've also been an academic and mm -hmm. done a lot of research and teaching, which I love also. Um, and so uh, about two years ago, or two or three years ago, my colleague, also uh, a Columbia alumni, uh, Terry Mizrahi, mm -hmm. said to me, you know, let's do a voter mobilization campaign. And I said, I don't have time for that. I have all my research to do, as a normal academic usually does. Yeah. But then I started thinking about the voter suppression that's been going mm. on. You know, I had been active in the civil rights movement, and I was really um, so thrilled when the 1960, when the 1965, uh, when I heard the 1965 bill was passed and yeah. so on, the voter rights bill. And um, when I started to learn about voter suppression, about voter IDs and gerrymandering and really excluding people from the vote, mm. it broke my heart. Mm. It just tore me up because, I mean, this is like a basic democratic right and it was so hard won and people died to get it and now it was being taken away. So I said, Terry, yes! <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so the two of you got together and uh, got in touch with other people. I mean, how did this all sort of coalesce into a campaign? Well, her office is four doors, doors down from mine okay. at, at Silverman, and we started calling people and asking them, and a lot of people uh, came on board, and we, we got a group of, a steering committee, a small group of volunteers, mm -hmm. and then we went after endorsements from the major social work organizations, and in a flash, we have about 20, 20 endorsements from mm -hmm. major organizations like CSWE, the Council on Social Work Education, to the perinatal social workers mm -hmm. who came to us. Mm -hmm. um, we, so we think that this happened very fast okay. um, because people are concerned about voter suppression and other mm -hmm. things. And so we, um, you know, with, um, with electronic email and mm -hmm. internet, we, a website had been uh, uh, started about a year earlier called Voting as Social Work from the Humphreys Institute at okay. University of Connecticut All where right. they do political um, social work. Yeah. And so um, we were able to expand that and use their expertise and the expertise of people. Social workers around the country are involved. Yeah. And we were able to form a, a, a bunch of volunteers to work with us. And it was an unfunded campaign mm. except for a short while we had a few, little funding. Um, and we were able to do webinars, we were able to do uh, distribute information, how to vote and so on, through um, these organizations that sent the information through the email to their constituents and to their memberships. And we now have uh, on our mailing list over a thousand participants. Okay, wow, so really, really spreading out across the country. Ac across the country. We did yeah. a follow-up survey of the campaign, I'm mm -hmm. jumping ahead a little bit, but, and we had, um, we had a representative from 40 of the 50 states wow. in that who, who agreed to participate in that okay. survey. Yeah. Um, before I ask my next question, I wanted to remind our audience that uh, we reserve the last 10 minutes for Q and A. So if you've got a question, uh, please type it in, and our manager here will bring it up for us um, at the end, so we can ask Dr. Abramovitz. Um, so the campaign is the 
I don't want to say proper name, but it's it's the National Social Work Voter Mobilization, Mobilization Campaign. campaign. Okay, and, and it's, its nickname is Voting is Social Work. And the work. nickname is Voting <laughs> is Social Work. So you've got a website, right? That's right. And you've uh, put together all these activities to target specifically schools of social work to to kind of. Uh, put out the word or to get out the word? I mean, how does it work? Yeah, well, we're, we're all faculty, mostly faculty okay. and students, and but we have we have field departments too, and we mm. have agencies. And so the, the hub of the campaign is our field departments. Mm. Because, you know, I always say social work, you said why social work? Social workers are ideally located right. to because we sit between the individual and society. Yeah. And so what's a better place to sort of materialize that, to see that in operation is in the field work department. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of our efforts went to train um, field instructors so oh. they would know how to register, um, to train their students who are, some of them are interns, how to register people to vote. Um, and so that was a big, big part mm -hmm. the, as, as a hub. And according to the President, the, the CEO of the National Association of Social Workers. Mm -hmm. There were some 12 million social workers uh, clients seen by social workers every, every day. day yeah. So, and and he said 22 percent of them are not registered. So there's a pool of unregistered voters oh, okay. that we are really well situated, ideally situated, um, to register. Ooh. And so, why not? Okay. So uh, those 12 million clients that we work with every day, right? Um, we can do the outreach, we can provide education uh, about voting rights and uh, some material support as far as, uh, you know, getting to the polls and things like that? Well, we, we, we work through the, the schools and mm. the agency staff. Okay. So through the schools, we um, involve faculty, we get information to them, we involve students, we, and we have lists of things you can do like hold a forum, set up a table for voter registration, make an assignment about for your students mm -hmm. about voter registration, okay. and sort of educate them how, how to find out who represents them. It's partly a civic participation yeah. component too. But we also work through the agency, so we have the agency staff do things that are agency appropriate. They may do community forums, they do, may do their own regist voter registration pro products, projects. And um, so it's, it's twofold, mm -hmm. that we work on both fronts with the agencies through our schools right. and through our schools so through the faculty. Okay, so, um, so this raises the question um, and the issue. Uh, are these activities um, Okay, I mean, under federal <laughs> law, are we as social service agencies receiving federal monies uh, allowed to do this kind of work? That's really a good question because one, of, there are a couple of myths that float around mm. that are make it some social workers uncomfortable for to participate right. in these kinds of campaigns, and so one of our jobs is to refute these myths. Mm. So the myths are generally that um, it's. Um, it's not. It's not. It's partisan. Mm. This campaign is, as m all voter registration campaigns are, is nonpartisan, which means that we don't support a particular candidate okay. or a particular party. We are just interested in having people exercise this basic democratic right and, and have the information and the skills to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, nonpartisan in nature, but. Are there other barriers to involving social workers, either as educators or as practitioners, in this effort? Well, there are a couple, there are a couple of other barriers. They also think it's unprofessional to do this on the job. Yeah. You know, I'm sitting with my client. How do I bring this up? Okay. So it's not the idea is not to insert yourself in the middle of a therapeutic relationship and start sure. talking about voter education, but. Your agency can have voter registration drive. They can have s meetings if they have meetings with, with clients or mm -hmm. after sessions. Obviously, you know, we have a voter registration job. Would you like to see it? Can a form? Would you like to see it? Mm -hmm. Can I help you fill it out? So you do it adjunctive to your, okay. your, your regular social work. So if you're working in a healthcare setting, it would be no different from saying, you know, telling a client about you know, applying for uh, benefits. insurance benefits yeah. or things like that. Exactly. And, could, and these are right. just as much, you know, it is uh, kind things of that an, an entitlement. It uh, is yeah, kind yeah, of an well, entitlement. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, that we should be mm -hmm. uh, utilizing, right? And letting our clients know about how they can tap into yeah. it. Right? They also think it's illegal. Hmm. It's illegal now because people have heard of the Hatch Act, which says if you work like I work in a public university or right. a public sector, you can't do this. But the Hatch Act does not disallow voter registration, nonpartisan voter registration. There's a few activities 
in the in the partisan vein that you're, you're not allowed to do, but is it, not only is it legal, but in 1983 the um, National Voter Registration Act was mm -hmm. passed, and your audience might be interested to know that two of Columbia professors were instrumental mm -hmm. in getting that um, law passed. We call it's called the Motor Voter Bill, mm -hmm. the prof and and it's um, what it does is it allows. It mandates uh, motor vehicle bureaus and oh, right. social service agencies, nonprofit and set public, to register uh, people to vote. It's mm. mandates. So it certainly allows it. And the, the there was the, the professors who were involved with the Fran Francis Fox Piven, which mm -hmm. is very well known, and Richard Cloward, both at the School of Social Work for a while. Mm -hmm. um, Richard, much longer. Francis went over to CUNY after a while. Um, but um, they they. They not they made sure that this legislation applied to public sector social service agencies because in the, originally they the law was to um, just cover motor vehicle bureaus but they said who has a car and mm. who doesn't and they wanted it to be inclusive of everybody who yeah. who is often denied the right or excluded from the right to vote so right. so all those three it's it's nonpartisan it's professional and it's legal. Mm -hmm. Um, and thanks again for sharing um, some of the history, right, the background uh, to how social work has been involved with this issue. And I know you've written an article uh, about this in, in the Journal of Social Work Education, um, and I'm hoping that our director can post a link or Thank make you. it available to our viewers as well because it's uh, chock full of uh, great information, not only about the history of social workers' involvement with the uh, um, voter engagement, but also you've sort of looked at these uh, uh, beliefs that social workers have about um, doing these sorts of activities and, uh, and some of the barriers, right? So. Yeah, and also um, this article. Let me just add that it's open access. You you don't have to have a subscription to the journal for the till after the election. That we have a year of open access, so you can just click onto oh, okay. it. Okay. Journal of Social Work Education, published by the Council on Social Work Education, our accrediting body, mm -hmm. um, and it also includes lots of the activities, the kinds of things we did during the campaign. We really get into the weeds as well as into the historical background. Um, and I should just add that the, the campaign that I mentioned before, that a Pivot and Cloud, was called Human Serve. Oh, right. And so that we were sort of following in their footsteps mm. in this because they tried to do it before email. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> On the yeah. ground, which has made it a much Difficult, more difficult task. And, but you've been doing similar things. You've come here to the School of Social Work to do a kind of, and I know you're not sure that this is the right expression, but train the trainer sort <laughs> of uh, um, seminar um, with with uh, um, faculty and, and, and field educators here uh, at the School of Social Work. And uh, um, I mean, I'm an instructor, so uh, I have to confess um, I haven't directly addressed issues of voter registration and so on um, in the courses I teach. Um, I teach a direct practice course. A perfect uh, place for, to for do First year <laughs> students, yeah, you know, and, and so often, you know, uh, people who teach practice think, well, you know, the the policy and the, right. that that can be in the policy or advocacy course section, you know, or and and why not? So, can you give me some tips on on how I can incorporate this material well, into into my practice well, course? Well, I mean, let me just say first that um, another project I'm involved with that mm. speaks right to that is that is to to, to undo this. Solo, this, yeah, this, yeah, the yeah. separation yeah. of micro and macro practice, right. and so there are a lot of us in the field who are working on working to rebalance both the curriculum and increase enrollment. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you can certainly talk to your students. They can register people to vote in the field, okay. and they're right. all interns. Sure. Number one, you can give them assignments to find out how the electoral process works, mm -hmm. um, and you can motivate them to say that you know. Um, uh, your, where your work, your internship, possibly your school, like a public agency, or public school, university where I work, mm -hmm. or um, you're dependent on the funding from Congress, from the government, and that funding mm -hmm. um, goes in different places depending on who, what the voters say they want. Right. So they have a, they can exercise an influence over their own future employment mm -hmm. and the well-being of their clients. Yeah. Well, I, certainly. I mean, it, there should be that connection, right, between micro to mezzo to, to macro, and uh, we have to underscore those connections as part of our students' uh, education um, and, and putting their practice in that 
larger, broader context, right, right uh, of, of policy. So, so that's that's one component of it. There's the field component that you've right. talked about. There's there's the school component. Um, are you organizing students as well? Are they out there getting involved with uh, these kinds well, of activities? A lot of the schools. I see what happens yeah. the way this works. Um, the faculty get involved, they yeah. get trained through our, we do train the trainers on our webinars mm -hmm. too, and then um, they engage their students, how many social work schools are around the country, mm -hmm. so it, it's a trickle down, we put out the information from the center and then we hope that they will organize their students, their faculty, their clients, and we try to highlight the benefits <laughs> of this, this also speaks to your other question too, yeah. the benefits of voter registration and getting out the vote. Mm -hmm. um, there's research that shows that individuals, um, it promotes well-being, health, yeah. mental health, sense of efficacy, you feel like you're engaged in the world, you're making a difference. So on an individual level, on the community level, sort of what I said before, um, areas that have high voter turnout mm -hmm. get better responses from their local politicians, mm -hmm. get more, more resources allocated to them. Money talks, votes talk, every vote counts, right. um, and um, the uh, the profession. It's a benefit to the profession because if we have a strong base and we're producing the votes, then the profession is empowered when it tries to work on the agenda that serves social work's mission, which yeah. serves all of us. And mm -hmm. so, it, we have t we see 12 million people, and 50 percent of them are voters. You mm -hmm. know, it begins to give you a little organizing power so the individuals benefit, communities benefit, and um, the profession benefits. But most social workers don't know that individuals benefit, because that's, that's the new yeah. one. The yeah. other two you could sort of figure out. But that's the new one that actually has a, a well-being impact, which mm. is really interesting. On an individual level. Yeah. It's fascinating. Yeah. Um, you know, I, and, and, and unfortunately, in the United States, it, it seems like voter turnout is just so low, right, and has been declining. Over the years, um, I mean, we've had a bump, I think, in midterm elections right, recently, yeah. which is encouraging, but um, at a population level, it seems like um, voter engagement is, has just not been what it could be. It's very low, and I want to yeah. say something about that's really important to think about. So it, it speaks to that every vote counts. A lot of people are sort of disillusioned. They don't think their vote right. matters. But every vote counts because um, with, with, low voter, with low voter turnout, yeah. a small number of votes make a big difference. Mm. But it's also true that a small number of votes can make a big difference in an election, that, a campaign that you support. Right. So don't think your vote doesn't count because um, you, don't, you don't want it to go away, but you want to use it when a, you can make a, um, a, a small, your vote could be one of those small numbers of votes that got right. your candidate elected. Right, right. And it's not just the big national elections, right? It could be the yeah. local city council, um, you know, board of education, what, what have you, right? To, to make that kind of difference. A absolutely. And it adds up, you know, from community to community. So, so thank you. Um, we can turn to questions, I think, um, from our audience. Um, how will uh, your group address online disinformation and other high-tech tools of voter suppression? Interesting. Well, I mean, we are just targeting social work. That, yeah. that really needs to be done, and we try to talk about the problems associated with voter suppression. Mm. Um, I think we have to rely on larger organizations to deal with that in, in, a, in a mass way. Mm -hmm. But um, I should say that um, the, the National Association of Social Workers has invited us to co-lead their Social Work Votes campaign, mm -hmm. and they possibly have the resources to um, uh, take up that issue on a, on a national level with all their thousands and thousands of members to talk about the, um, you, have to, you basically have to undo the, the myths about voter fraud, the, the problems with voter IDs, and you have to identify who's being targeted back there. This is very much targeted to low-income people, to people of color um, who are less likely to vote and who some people think vote the way they don't, the leaders don't want them to vote. So, okay. um, and those are the people that we serve. Yeah. So there's a real overlap. I guess I could say the best way we're doing that is um, registering low-income people, clients of social work, agencies who tend to fall into the categories that are targeted for voter suppression. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if 
you know, social workers, either as individuals or as a profession, can fix everything out there. But what we can do is is employ our strength-based perspective and, and, and shore up the resources that underserved communities have right now um, exactly. and to add their voice to what we hope is, is um, well, not a different narrative, but um, a more positive one. So. And more, and more demo I mean, it's a basic demo democratic, democratic process, right. I mean, sure. you know, an, a, a fair and effective v electoral process is key to the survival of our democracy. Absolutely. Um, what is, quote, political social work, unquote, and is it partisan? How do you study political social work? That's an interesting question. Okay. So if, let me, I'll answer it in a second. But first, refer, I'll refer you to the University of Connecticut, okay. um, where they have a program in political social work. Mm -hmm. And basically what they do is they train people to run campaigns. They train people to be participate mm -hmm. it, in, in uh, political activities, electoral activities. It's nonpartisan. They don't, they don't train people to vote for A or B. But okay. social work is, we, we, you know, part of social work is community organizing. Mm -hmm. And so we, have, we train people that and in policy practice and so some of those students really want to run for office mm -hmm. and so here's a place that where they can learn how to do political social work okay so it's kind of along the lines of you know how do you become an advocate right and, huh. and it doesn't determine what cause you're advocating right exactly. it's just it's the skills right uh, of, yeah. of advocacy and, that and most schools don't teach that lay of skills. They may teach advocacy, but they don't teach how to participate in the campaign. Right. It's a particular set of skills and a particular, you have to learn strategies, you have to learn communication, yeah. all sorts of things that yeah. you need more than just your two years of social work and, education. And again, it's, it, there's that uh, uh, social media digital, digital component to all of this as well, which I think um, we have faculty here at the School of Social Work who are uh, interested in that topic and, and working on that as well. So, so they can put it to use this way. And we can put it to use this way, yeah. Um, <laughs> So, uh, thank you. Uh, in in my experience, uh, this is another question. In my experience, I find that people have trouble finding concise information about candidates. Have you come across this? Is this a form of voter suppression? And do you plan to address this in the campaign? Yeah, well, I mean, one of the ways to discourage voting is to make sure people don't know what the issues are, they don't know who the candidates are, they don't know what they represent. So we encourage people to invite candidates to their agency or to the school to group meet group at forums and so on. So that's that's one way, um, and um, uh, and we also uh, so that is a piece of voter. Uh, I need to have the question repeated. I think there were three parts to that question. Mm. So yes, but we do we do try to uh, uh, do that with by c the myths, by educating them, by um, and um, uh, yeah, encouraging them to uh, use. Oh, I know what I wanted to say. Yes. So there, we do link them to there are a lot of national like Turbo Vote, Rock the Vote, and so on. And those those organizations, you can actually register online mm. through those organizations, and then they remind you to vote. So they're very, very effective yeah. follow-up to what we're doing because the person gets engaged in the system and they're kept, kept mm. in touch. And mm. so we, uh, on voting as social work, there are all sorts of resources that deal with this information okay. lapse and also how to get contact these uh, organizations. And, and to get sort of concise, you know, uh, digestible information that help you kind of organize what, I mean, is, is for at least the, the, the democratic field, a wide open kind of primary season now. Right. So, um, okay, next question. Are you encouraging social work students and social workers to travel to swing states? Um, hmm. Well, um, we didn't do that last time, but that's a great idea yeah. for schools that, well, for schools to take up in their schools. We don't, we work through the faculty and the other people who are involved with us. So we, that would be a great thing to mm -hmm. encourage our students yeah. to do, to go, to go do that. Be a nice thing to add to our activity list. Great and, idea. And and for students, you know, to to register in their home states and cast absentee ballots and things like that. Yes. Because you know, here in New York, I kind of feel that well because we lean a particular way that our votes are somewhat less effective at a national level, right? Um, in, in terms of the electrical college, the electoral college and so on. But um, for our students who come from other states, it's really important but, that, but it's also, yeah. But our students, um, some of them have, have no experience with the, the electoral system. So mm -hmm. even though a, a state may be blue or red, it's still, it's still, very useful for them to get involved in all this, to mm -hmm. learn about it, because they may move somewhere else. You don't know where they're going to be. True. So, yeah. so we, don't, we try not to um, 
uh, to say yes or no like okay. that, but everybody should have this skill. Everyone should have this right. capacity. And um, you know, probably your students at Columbia, more than where I work, come from all over the country, so they're mm -hmm. going to be going back. We have a lot more local students. Okay. Yeah. Uh, next question. What are ways we can support those who are disenfranchised? Prisoners, immigrants, DV victims? Yeah, well, our literature addresses these issues because oh, okay. we talk about, you know, that felons, not all felons can vote. Mm -hmm. And so the felon disenfranchisement is a big issue we take up. We take up all the, ex the immigrants. And we take up all those exclusionary practices mm -hmm. and try to educate people about them. Okay. All right. Well, uh, obviously, it's it's a tremendous enterprise to be involved with at this time in our history and so on. And uh, um, again, sort of going back to the personal angle for all of this, um, um, is there a connection? I mean, with your previous research and and focusing on on women and activism and so on, and and what you're doing now. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I. I'm ha I, I worked in the welfare rights movement mm -hmm. many years ago, yeah. and um, I'm doing research on low-income women's activism in relation to social welfare. I'm also, I teach public policy, so I'm also writing about um, contemporary social policies and its negative impact mm -hmm. on social work clients, social work programs, and so on. So getting people out to vote is a corrective for, uh, it supports the activism and will add to the history, I hope, and also will um, uh, be a corrective to some, uh, be an, another voice. Your, your vote is your voice. There'll be another voice out there mm -hmm. arguing for things that reflect social work values, social work mm. missions. And so to me, it's like, People often introduce me as a, a scholar and an activist, and I really like that because I really do try to combine them, and I think it's the right thing to do, mm -hmm. um, and it adds to one sense, my sense of well-being. Mm. <laughs> yeah, and and you know, for us in the social work discipline and profession, it just reminds us again that I mean that's at our core, right? Um, that that kind of activist stance, and I'm just again um, asking you to draw upon your decades of experience in the field and sort of looking at social work, you know, from that perspective, I mean, where, do, where are we going um, as a profession? And, and what's the corrective course that we need? Do you, do you have any suggestions or advice for, for this profession, where well, it needs to go in the future? So you can invite me back for another interview on that <laughs> right. because I had actually done a big piece of research on I, that. I thought so. Called Business as Usual, yeah. Wake Up Call for the Human Service Profession. But it's, it's I can't really summarize it mm. so briefly and, and be not misinterpreted. Okay, so, all right. Um, but um, I think the profession is working very hard to combat the, the forces and the, the policies and the act actions that are hurting our clients. Mm. But... Um, we, you know, we need a lot of support from others in, in society to do that, and programs like this, I think, are really helpful because they help spread the word about what can be done. Um, and, um, so, you know, I always say to my students, what's done can be undone. Mm. So we have to be ready and willing and able to step in there, step up for, into the fight, whichever way we possibly can. Okay. Some people do it in small, some people do it in big ways, but every little bit counts. All right. Um, we have one more question and one more comment. So let's see. I attended one of the early events in the 2020 election series here at Columbia, and I recall a student saying she still hadn't been able to persuade her immigrant mother to vote. How, she wondered how she could persuade anyone else. Isn't it very challenging to do this kind of thing? It's very challenging, yeah. especially for the immigrant population who are so under assault today, they're very afraid yeah. to, to step out of the box of any kind mm. because they're afraid they may get deported or something. They have mm -hmm. a very negative attitude. Um, that said, that's much harder, but it's even hard to convince people who feel like, another thing we found, people think that their vote doesn't count, they think politics is right. dirty, they don't think it's worth it, they don't think there's enough diversity in the candidates or in the programs. So that's where information comes in. Right. If you give people the information that speaks to their needs and their interests, um, uh, and also have organizations such as social work agencies that help people get to the polls, mm. help people um, register. Those are all, the, it's step by step, it's a lot of hard work. Those are all okay. the things that you can be done. And maybe this, an immigrant mother might someday be convinced if she had enough information mm. and felt safe enough in this country. Okay. Um, 
having hosted a voter registration event with uh, the League of Women Voters, it is amazing how much m uh, misinformation is out there regarding voter registration. If you are in a position to inform, definitely do it. Um, it was very rewarding and we registered dozens of people. So this is more of a comment and kind of appreciation of the work that you're doing. Well, thank as you. Well. Thank you. I really appreciate that. It's good news to hear that. And so I often say, as I'm finishing up my talks, and I'll say it now, <laughs> okay. um, be part of history. Join mm. the National Social Rights Voter Mobilization Campaign. Okay, I'll leave you with the final words. So, <laughs> so thank you again, um, Dr. Abramovitz, for uh, joining us here today at Social Impact Live. Um, that concludes today's episode. We'll be joined next week by Sholpan Primbetova and Tara McCrimmon to discuss the challenges faced by U.S. trained social workers when working in other countries and how to build effective collaborations. So. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Looking forward to seeing you next week. Bye-bye now. <laughs>